Please welcome Kim, the happy guy, Yancey. <laughs> you know, that song was played so much, right? But I don't know that we ever got tired of it. No, right? So now you don't hear it as much. So now when you hear it, it's like brand new again. You know what I mean? All right. All right. So this is day three. Day three. Man. Um, big party tonight. Lots of networking. We have the incredible um, International Film Tour Awards. It's really going to be exciting. It's going to be great. You know, for those of you that have never seen this before, uh, that International Film Tour Awards just, um, it takes you to a place emotionally that just really warms your heart like, like never before. So it's really going to be fantastic. Um, all right, so networking. Having a good time with meeting new people? How's that? Yeah, let me, let me tell you, you know what? Um, I always struggle with networking. Believe it or not, you know, Sandra talked about this, has talked about this before, but when we started eWomen Network 15 years ago, I'm telling you, um, the number one reason why we did this is because both of us were bad at networking. And you know, when I, I had an advertising agency, and when I had my agency, I would go to Chamber of Commerce meetings. And by the way, you know, listen, I'm a fan of Chambers of Commerce, uh, bring huge value to the market. But what I found is that I would go to these Chamber of Commerce meetings and I always felt like I failed. It was, I went there and I was very clear in my objective. I wanted to meet some people and I wanted to get some new business for my advertising agency. So I had all my cards, I was loaded up, I'd walk into these Chamber meetings and I'm looking for people to sell my products to. I was very singularly focused on that. I'm here for new business. That's why I'm here. And every time I'd leave, I'd think, well, did I get any new business? Did anybody say they want to meet with me and do business with me? No, I just, I completely missed the point. And one day, I went and saw a friend of mine. His name was George Fraser. He uh, wrote a book called Success Runs in Our Race. He's out of Cle Cleveland, Ohio. And um, just heard about this guy. And it was in the middle of the day, he was doing a book signing at a, at a bookstore in Dayton, Ohio. And so I just thought, you know, something just compelled me. I was busy all the time. I had 40 employees. But I decided, you know, in the middle of the afternoon, I'm going to go to this book signing, which I've never done. Never. I go and I sit back. And George proceeds to say that the number one reason why you network is to give. Is to give. And it just, I mean, it just... You know, I mean, floored me. I'm sitting here and I'm like, oh my gosh, I've been doing it all wrong. I've been going to network to get. My focus was on what am I going to get? In fact, I couldn't wait for them to stop talking so I could tell them about my product and services. You know, I wanted to hurry up with what I had to go. And I thought that whoever went first, like by going first, let me tell you about me. Let me just tell you everything I can about me because I really want to sell my thing. But when he said it was about giving, it changed everything for both Sandra and I. And we, our approach changed. Then we broke it down even more. And I thought, I thought about every deal that I personally have ever secured in business. And I started to talk to friends about, tell me about the deals, the, the biggest deals, the greatest opportunities that have come to you. Where have they come from? And we found out, I've not talked to anybody who's closed a big deal where face-to-face -face interaction, what I call disruptive face-to-face -face communication wasn't a part of it. So I broke this thing down. In fact, there are 12 ways that when you come to an event like this that you need to be think in your mind, thinking about the opportunities that are in front of you. So in addition to selling, you network for resources. Resources. This is an unbelievable resource pool for any help that you need. You know, American Express did a study and they, it was all around what they were trying to get to. All right, if only 2% of women-owned businesses crack the million dollar code, the million dollar threshold in business, what is it? What's the blockage? The number one thing they discovered was women don't ask for help. That was the number one thing they felt. They wouldn't ask for help. I've seen it in my own life. I, I've got to remind people. I've got to remind people on our staff. You know, ask for help. Ask for what you do. You, don't, you know what happens, ladies? And I've seen this. It's this, it's this layering effect where you layer 
you have all these things on your plate, and you're so gifted, you're so talented, and you have all of these things on your plate, and so they layer up on you. They just boom, 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 just layers of things at you. Next thing you know, you're feeling a whole lot of anxiety, a whole lot of stress. How am I going to get this all done? And through all of that, you're not asking for help. And help can be everything from, honey, will you wash the car? Could you help me? Hey, honey, would you mind filling up my car? I mean, it's little things to the big things, but asking for help. This is an unbelievable resource center for you. I want you to understand this. Yes, you want to market and sell your product. That's a given. There's not one of you here that doesn't have a gift that you want to offer someone else. And make no doubt about it, you all have gifts. But I want you to know you got a resource pool here. So that's one. Number two, ideas. You know, how many ideas do you need? Quite frankly, all you need is one blockbuster idea out of this whole conference. You walk away with one implementable, implementable idea, you've won the game. One. You walk away with one. Now, if you're gifted enough and you get two, three, four, oh my God, you've hit the jackpot. But ideas. Network for ideas. Listen, I'm... You know, uh, Sandra and I are not, we're getting more and more comfortable with this. I have to get comfortable with the 60 word, the 60 word, okay? So let me tell you. <laughs> hey, listen, I'll make no mistake about this, too. You know, I mean, let's just talk about anybody that's in my, any uh, 1950s anything babies out there? Okay. Well, you 1950 babies, you know this, okay? That, I'm talking about that whole decade of the 50s. You know what? I mean, you get out of bed, you find, I mean, I got to warm up. You know? <laughs> Right, right. You know, th there are times when you're walking in your house, no one can see you, and you know you have this thought in your mind. You said, I'm glad there's no camera on me right now. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, all right, so resources, ideas, partners, partners. You know, you network for partners. Now, I'm not talking about 50-50 revenue share partners or, the, or people who are partners in your company. I'm talking about partners that can augment what you do. So let's talk about what that means, augment what you do. So if all of a sudden, oh, I, I can take you to here, I don't do C, D, and E. I do A and B. But C, D, and E, you've got to go someplace else to get it. No, they don't. They can do it with you because you have a partner who does C, D, and E. You know, this is a place for you to like build your infrastructure and your network because you have other people who can fill in the gaps in the areas where you don't. And you, because you've built the trust with your client, have a relationship with this client so that when you say, this is who you want to use, you trust them. You see what I'm saying? So, re so, so, so partners, femtors and mentors. You know, there are people you're going to meet that, you know, maybe there's no, quote, business, but they inspire you. There's something else. They make you laugh. They bring a joy to you. They create an opportunity for you. You know, one of the things in, with... with uh, you know, Hiram Smith, for those of you, if you don't know who Hiram Smith is, Hiram Smith is the founder of, the, of Franklin, the Franklin book, and then later his company acquired Stephen Covey's company, became Franklin Covey. Well, I knew Hiram years ago, not personally, knew him on video. I had a good relationship with him on video. <laughs> but I just loved him, loved him. And, you know, when I met him, and Sandra and I met, the, met him and built a really a deep, meaningful, personal friendship with him, you know, one of the first things he did is says, come on out to the ranch. I want to get you out to my ranch. Come on out and spend a weekend. I mean, the guy's a master because here's what he knew. Let's not talk business. I like you. Come on out to the ranch. Let's spend a weekend together. Do you understand the power of inviting people into your world, including them into your world? No, it doesn't have to be a ranch. It can be, it, listen, it can be a wonderful lunch. Let just, let me tell you something. One of the greatest things you can do is let yourself off the hook with thinking there's got to be some kind of special outcome to having this lunch with you. No, you can have lunch with someone and enjoy someone because you just said, said you know what, I just feel a connection. I just want to know you better. Nothing's better than for you to take someone else out and I just want to learn more about you. you know how, do you know how intoxicating that is? How wonderful that is? With no outcome. No outcome. Because magic happens then. I'm not suggesting, here's what's important. I'm not suggesting these things as a tactic. Okay, this is not like, okay, I have an alternative motive, motive here. Be sincere and be authentic in these feelings and stuff's going to unfold. And stuff is going to unfold that you didn't count on. You know, it's always, I love it, you know, all the interesting things that happen on the way to the dance, on the way to doing what you do, 
It's incredible the things that happen to you, that unfold for you. I promise you this. I doubt, I doubt that, that, that you're doing today what you thought you would be doing 20 or 30 years ago. You understand what I'm talking about? What I'm saying is you have evolved and you will continue to evolve as our culture has evolved. So you just have to be open to these things. The more you're open to them and let go of outcomes of immediate, I've got to have some meaning behind this right now and let go of it, oh, you're going to have a lot more fun, a lot more fun. Social connection. The other thing here while you're here is the social connections that will be created, both for online. You know, one of the, one of the things that I find most intriguing are the people I run into and I say to them, I feel like I know you because I see you on Facebook. I see your posts. I see what you say. You know, and it's great to meet with you and connect with you in person. You know, I got to tell you something. That space, let me see here. Stand for just a second, Tressy. Stand, stand. All right, let's step, step, step right here. All right, so we're talking right now, okay? So that's one thing. But as we come a little bit closer, it comes a little closer. This is very disruptive. <laughs> no, no, it doesn't get any more disruptive. You don't have a better opportunity than what we've got right here. This is the magic right here, the space that we've got. The brain, all of it, our chemistry, all of that, and the decisions that we're making. But this is the opportunity. This is priceless. I mean, Facebook is fine. This is priceless, okay? Absolutely. Hey, can I have a hug? You can have a hug. All right, so <clears throat> um, leads, countless leads, countless leads when you network. Network for investors. Now, you know what I'm I'm looking for investors. It comes up in, when you meet people and you're talking to people, and you know, especially when people are doing the same thing you do. You know what, you know a great way you can franchise your business? Not necessarily going through a franchising model, which is excellent, but you can franchise, franchise your business by lining up with another partner who does the same kind of thing, and you create a franchise-like relationship with, an, with another person. You're doing this in LA, I'm doing this in Cincinnati. Oh, you're doing this in New York? I'm, I'm doing this in Texas. I mean, there are things that you guys could start to have discussions around. Quite frankly, you just sometimes it's just, just a great exercise to have the discussion, to have a talk about what could be. You know, I remember when I first met our first date, Sandra and I, our first date. These were the parting words after our first date. I looked at her. I had a great time. We had a great time with each other. And I said to her, I said, is it possible that we can go to a play, go to a movies, go out dancing, and not have a destination? Could we do that? And she looked at me, she had broken up with her high school boyfriend, and she says, I love that. Do you understand? Let go of the expectations. Do we have to have a destination? Let's just begin. And then it, 38, 39 years later, okay? Friends, you network for friends. Just listen. You cannot be in a better place for friends than right here. You can't be in a better place for friends. Shared, what do you have? You got shared vision, you have shared commitment, you have shared passion. Friends, don't let the friends slip through your fingers. Don't let it happen. Here's the one thing, and I know you're experiencing this because we're so open here, and when you get outside of you, we never can feel so very different. But, you know, here, this is the kind of environment where you can walk up to another woman and just say, I've seen you. You know what? I just want to get to know you. I just want to know you better. Nothing awkward about that. The other person is going to say, fantastic. You see how beautiful this is? Employees. Employees. So, don't take any of my employees. <laughs> okay, no. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but you ask. You, you know, you ask for People, let people know what you're looking for. And not only that, but you know, I'll go to an eWomen Network event. Listen to this. I'll go to an eWomen Network event and I'm in the circle. And guess what I say? I need somebody who's a good concrete man. I've got some columns that I have to have some concrete work on. And I also need someone to stain my fence. You guys know anybody? You know, I mean, I'm looking for a plumber. I mean, I use that network for so many resources. It's unbelievable. It's, un it's incredible. In fact, I think, I think when you're asking for help, from eWomen Network, it's better than anything. I think it's better than anything. It's because it's there. It's there. Um, and marketing. Marketing. It's, you got to show up. I'm telling you, there's not one national sponsor. I brought in, 
I brought in million dollar sponsors. I brought in, you know, $2,000 sponsors. There's not one sponsor that I've ever been able to do a big deal with that it wasn't because I met them face to face. I make sure, you know what you're doing right now? My, success, my personal success is related to business and sponsorships because that's one of the main roles I have at eWomen Network. All happen when I go to their events. I go to events. Magic is in events. I go, I just get your face in the place and start smiling. It's very important that you put a big smile on your face. Can I see your smile, everybody? Where's my camera? I want to get, I got to get my camera on this one, somebody. Okay, and the biggest of all, the biggest of all, I start this thing out with, you network to give. Number one, you network to give. 